Good morning again and welcome to our webinar today hosted by Forefront and the Dunham Fund together. We'll be talking about strategies for Giving Tuesday and I believe Vicki has some notes to get us started. Now let's see if I can make sure that she is not muted. All these fun technology things. There we go. Vicki, are you there? Here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You know, the I'll Give um, workshop and event is always, always co-hosted by the Community Foundation of the Fox River Valley and the Dunham Fund together. And um, so in a moment, Julie Christman is going to um, walk you through how we're going to do um, Giving Tuesday and the eligibility eligibility this year. I will tell you that we will be providing incentive awards again. Um, 12 different organizations will be awarded $2,000 each. It will be a virtual event in the evening. Um, so while I'm waiting on Julie to join us, I'm going to tell you about another opportunity that we have um, and I think that you, yeah, I've got share screen. Um, I'm gonna ask Susie if she will share the screen with me. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna see that I, sometimes I, I do well at this and sometimes I don't. I wanted to be able to, show y'all an opportunity for tickets to attend a virtual event on Monday evening hosted by the Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation. Um, this is a really cool event that they have um, scheduled. We have purchased tickets and we would ask that whoever is interested in attending this event is a conversation with Desmond Tutu's daughter and granddaughter, and it's called Our Hope for Social Justice. It's Monday evening, the 19th, from 5 until 6.30. And um, I'm just going to do this the old-fashioned way, and I'm sorry, I thought I had this pulled up. So what you would do is, if you're interested, go to info at dunhamfund.org and put in the subject line, two, two, T-U-T-U T -U -T -U tickets. Um, we will allow organizations to have up to um, two tickets per organization. Here we go. Can y'all see this on your screen? Yep, I see it now. Okay, good. Sorry, I had to go through all of that. Um, so anyway, we would allow two tickets per organization, but we would need your contact information, your email, and the names of those that would be attending so that we can provide that information to Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation, who is also one of our grant making partners. Um, so here's the information up on the screen. They're a newer grant maker to our area and they have a website. So you're welcome to also jump on the website and learn more about their event, but we wanted to be able to help promote it as our partner. So um, there you go, there's the information for Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask if Julie Christman has joined our call yet. Yes, Julie is here and I'm, oh. Awesome. Caroline. Julie, are you there? All right. Hey, Julie, are you with us? Uh, 
Oh, sorry. There we I'm, go. Oh, geez. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. No worries. We're all trying to navigate Zoom together, aren't we? Yes. Okay, so um, looks like I can't show my video, but that's okay. I'm just going to share my <laughs> screen because I, I ended up preparing just a brief PowerPoint to kind of go over the Giving Tuesday um, challenge grant program that Dunham Fund and the Community Foundation have put together. Um, so Vicki, I'm not sure if you shared any more information. I came on just a couple minutes late. Um, I did not. I went over Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation's right. okay. event and the tickets that are available for that event on Monday night. Okay. All right. Well, then let me go ahead and I'll just share this presentation really quickly. Um, okay. Oh, wait, this is not it. Hold on a second. Um, all right, so um, so basically, the Dunham Fund and the Community Foundation Foundation of the Fox River Valley are per, are gathering together again to um, give you all a challenge for Giving Tuesday. And ultimately, what we want to be able to do is to kind of just promote the fact that. Um, all of you as nonprofits are working really hard to raise money for the programs that you have. And we want to be able to indicate, you know, that there's some strategies that you all have learned and we want to really demonstrate that you've been able to produce some positive outcomes and success through this program by using those strategies. Um, so Giving Tuesday is December 1st. I'm sure you all have it on your calendar, which is exciting. Um, then any agency that's interested in participating in this challenge must complete an application. So the Community Foundation of the Fox River Valley has a grant making portal. And if you click on this link, it'll take you to that portal. Um, we'll make this you know, PowerPoint available um, at a later time, but you can easily find this grant making portal on our website. Um, and this is what it'll look, okay. And then the next um, slide is basically saying that, you know, the guidelines for this program are that applications will be available from November 10th through December 3rd. Agencies can start an application beginning November 10th, and then you can add information anytime throughout the application time period. Um, there'll be several things that we'll ask you to submit that are proven best practices for Giving Tuesday, and most of you will be using those anyway. And so we're just asking you to submit that information through this online portal so that we can gather all that information for you and then, you know, be able to um, really identify that you all are doing these great things. So you can start that application November 10th, add information throughout the whole time, and then you have to have it submitted by 4 o'clock p.m. on December 3rd. So basically any organization that submits a complete application through the grant portal will have your name placed in a lottery. And then 12 eligible nonprofit names will be drawn. And then each organization whose name is drawn will be awarded $2,000. So there's basic information in the application. Um, there's five things that if you do these five things before um, November 16th, then you receive a special incentive. And those five things are that you complete all the basic information in the application, which is just your contact information for your organization. We've kept it very simple. Upload your 501c3 and provide a link to your agency's website, things that you would normally do in any kind of application. Then give your project giving to say project name and your fundraising goal. So just tell us, you know, what are you fundraising for um, and what's your fundraising goal? Upload a high res logo of your organization. Upload a picture of your agency representative or a t you know or your whole team kind of holding up a sign that says hashtag I'll give or Giving Tuesday, some kind of word of inspiration on an eight and a half by ten piece of paper. It can just be from your phone. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then upload the customized thank you message that your organization is going to provide to donors upon receipt of each donation during the campaign. So we basically want you to do these things that you would probably do anyway, but it's just an idea of, you know, kind of saying, hey, let's, you know, get these things done early. So if you do those things by 
November 16th and you upload them into the portal and we'll be able to see which organizations have done that, then every organization that does that will receive a book that was recently put out by Gloria Kelly, who's the executive director of Casa King County called No Surprises Leading in the Nonprofit World. Um, so this book was just recently released and Dunham Fund has graciously said that if any organization that completes those first few steps by November 16th will receive this recently released book. Now the next thing that we'll ask you to do is to submit a screenshot of five unique messages on your social media platforms. So you're most likely going to be doing this anyway, so, you know, putting out these um, special messages that you know you want set at different times throughout the campaign and so we're just going to ask that you take screenshots of those messages and upload them into the portal and each message can be uploaded separately into the portal just like you would upload any other document um, and our grant portal will be open throughout that whole time and when and so you can just go into the portal after you've you know put one of these messages out there and upload it at any time and then we'll ask you to provide once this campaign is over, you know, right after Giving Tuesday, we'll say, please provide the total dollar amount that you raised during the Giving Tuesday campaign. And please provide the total number of dollars or donors that gave to the campaign. Now, in order to be eligible to participate, it doesn't matter how much you raise and it doesn't matter how many donors. We just are asking that you please provide the total number and the total dollar amount within the application. So nonprofit organizations have to be in the service area of the Dunham Fund and the Community Foundation of Fox River Valley. This can include areas of Aurora, Kendall County, and Tri-Cities. So these are some of the eligibility criteria that we wanna make sure that you are paying attention to. You must submit all the information required in the grant application and only complete applications will be considered eligible to apply. There's no restrictions on the grant funding that will be provided to organizations whose names are drawn. Meaning that if you, um, if you receive the grant funding, then you can spend that however you choose to spend within your organization. And lastly, that a receipt of a Giving Tuesday Challenge Grant does not impact any organization's application to the Dunham Fund or the Community Foundation. So if you receive you know, funding from this Giving Tuesday Challenge Grant, that doesn't mean that you can't apply for additional funding at Dunham Fund, you know, through the regular grant program or to the Community Foundation's other grant programs that we have. So we just wanted to kind of run through those, you know, basic eligibility requirements and things that you'll need to upload into the application so that you can just have the basic gist of what it is that you'll need to be able to submit. So I think, Vicki, that probably covered all of it. Is there anything that we missed? No, I think you did a great job with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the PowerPoint and we will make sure that the PowerPoint is sent out to everyone that's invited through eBytes and we'll also post it on Basecamp so that um, you have a chance to review the document again since we went through it quickly. Um, and if there's questions while we're going through the Giving Tuesday presentation today, the workshop, then, you know, if they're general questions, then you could put them in the chat box so that everyone could see them and we can answer those. But we hope that we are making it easier for y'all and we're saying, you know, whatever dollar amount you raise, however many donors you have is great. We just want to see that best practices are being um, put to use with the messaging and the personalized thank you note and being able for y'all or y'all being able to upload the majority of the things early, I think would be helpful. And you might even be using some of the same messaging that you've used in previous years for this year's campaign. It could just be tweaked for whatever your program is that you're raising money for. Awesome, thank you so much, Vicki and Julie. And we did have a question in the chat. Could you repeat the day that the applications are due for your challenge grant? So the applications are due December 3rd at 4 p.m. 
but the <laughs> early eligibility, if you want to be eligible for the book recently written by one of our local leaders, um, completing the basic portion of the app is due on November 16th. Great. So that's where you upload, you know, your 501c3, your high res logo and the other stuff that that um, Julie had gone through. Excellent. All right. Well, again, like Vicki and Julie said, if you have questions that pop up, feel free to throw those into the chat. So this is Susie again from Forefront. Um, I am going to Oh, a little bit darker than usual in here because it's a cloudy day outside, but good morning, everyone. I'll show my face uh, so we can make this a little bit more of a conversation for the next portion. Let's see, I see another question in the chat. If our organization is already a recipient of another Giving Tuesday matching grant, are we still able to apply or receive this award? Absolutely. All right, great, thank you. Um, and I see a raised hand from Taylor. Which, Taylor, if you have a question, can you type it into the chat? Oh, <laughs> Stand. All right, no worries, no worries. <laughs> All right, so before we launch into some of the data, I wanted to share uh, a poll real quick so we can frame kind of who's in our, our virtual room today. Um, so if you could vote in here, let us know a little bit about you and your organization and how your confidence level is. Oh, there, I'm seeing a vote. Okay, good, good folks are seeing the poll. So again, if you don't know me, I am Susie Lee. I'm the Director of Nonprofit Strategy and Engagement at Forefront. I've been working on Giving Tuesday since the first day I started at Forefront uh, um, about three and a half years ago. So this is one of my favorite projects. And honestly, uh, your, your community area is my favorite one to work with. Don't tell anybody else. Um, so I'm really happy to be here today. I have some information about um, resources and programs that we have available to share. Uh, I also just yesterday, Giving Tuesday National Office uh, hosted a webinar with newly released data about giving trends in 2020. So this is preliminary information, but it was really interesting. And so I was up fairly late last night reworking my whole presentation so I could share all the most up-to-date information with you all. So please uh, bear with me. This might be a little bit more rough around the edges as I've had very little time to, to sort of absorb the information myself, but I wanted to make sure everybody had access to it. So in about 10 seconds, I'm gonna close the poll. If you haven't had a chance, um, that's okay. Looks like most people have voted. Um, third question in there. Uh, so again, sort of bringing, bringing a little amusement to our day with the serious question though. How confident you are, you are you about Giving Tuesday 2020 that it will be a success for your organization? Um, for any of my fellow Marvel Comics fans, we've got Captain America is our super confident and not confident at all. I'm feeling some Loki level pessimism. Um, if you're not a Marvel fan, feel free to Google them later. Very entertaining. Uh, but I'm really excited to see that most folks are saying they are either somewhat confident or super confident. So I'm gonna share those results with all of you so that you know who else is in the room. And See if I can navigate back. There we go. Okay, so like I said, we'll be sharing some resources from Forefront, some platform ideas. Um, hopefully all of you received our message if you were registered on the I'll Give platform last year. We are no longer hosting the platform itself, so I'll be talking about some other options if you for them. 
um, that new donor data I mentioned from Giving Tuesday, and then even more links to resources and a big open session for questions. And it looks like I do have a question in the chat if it will let me open it again. All right, great. So if you are new to Giving Tuesday or would like to refresh on some of the central strategies, um, I think some of you have participated as we've been going along, but Forefront has recorded or is in the process of recording a digital giving web series. Um, so these are the four sessions, three we've already completed, um, and one is coming up on November 10th. And I, if you go to Forefront's website and search for digital giving series, it'll pop right up. I will also, at the end of the presentation, include the link in the chat. All right, but again, sort of starting where we have started in, in many sessions before, the highlights of our top performers. Even though this is an unprecedented year, so far, and so we're basing this off of Giving Tuesday's campaign in May, the Giving Tuesday Now campaign, we've seen a lot of the same success measures line up for, for the folks that are participating in Giving Tuesday in the May campaign that we've seen in in past campaigns. So we're sticking to our guns on, on most of these. So summarizing that, it's most organizations publicly announced their campaign two to four weeks ahead of Giving Tuesday. And again, I always really want to stress that that's the public announcement. You want to make sure your, of course, your staff, your board members, and any really like long-term volunteers or really engaged stakeholders, you want to make sure they know about your campaign ahead of your public announcement. Posting an average of 10 Facebook posts and six tweets. Of course, this is an average, um, but I remember the first time we, we found this number, I was really kind of delightfully surprised that it wasn't as overwhelming. It wasn't like 100 posts, um, but organizations that were most successful, so both, both in Illinois and nationally, they average about 10 Facebook posts and six tweets. Um, as always, other platforms are welcome, but these are still, even with the new ones coming up with TikTok, Facebook and uh, Twitter are still really, really active. Um, Instagram has become super active as well, so feel free to use that one, but this is kind of a nice baseline guide point. Sending out three or four emails on Giving Tuesday, that asterisk is for uh, keeping in mind who you're sending messages to. Um, we wanna make sure that you know, board members and major donors are usually not our target for Giving Tuesday, but our public face and our smaller donors are usually our best target audience for activation on Giving Tuesday. Engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, we've talked about those folks a lot in the past. If you're unfamiliar with that, we dig into it a little bit more in our web series and email series, again, that I mentioned, um, so we can, you can get more information on that. And then setting a goal for dollars raised that did not end in a zero. This is probably my favorite one just because it's a little bit quirky, um, but it's really tapping into that feeling. We know that folks that are likely to give on Giving Tuesday like to feel like they're giving an actual gift. They wanna think of, I'm giving a bicycle, I'm giving art supplies, I'm giving support for a senior to make a trip to a community center. They want to think about the tangible things that their donation is supporting. Oops. I see a couple of comments in the chat, so I'm going to navigate there for a moment. Ah, so the first one, who should you not send emails to? Um, Thinking about who we know is most likely to give on Giving Tuesday, we suggest not sending solicitation emails to major donors and board members on the day of. Those folks tend to get inundated and we've heard from a number of them that it's not the best way to engage. Um, 
So those folks are not recommended. Of course, every organization is different and you know your stakeholders better than I do, uh, but that is our general advice for most organizations. And then the next question I see, is there a post average per day per week the entire time clarified? Yes. So the, the 10 Facebook posts and six tweets, that's roughly the week leading up to, again, that's sort of an average of what we see successful for organizations across Illinois and across the country. Um, this is really kind of a, a, a benchmark. So I would say, you know, don't feel like you have to exactly match that number, but if you're if you were feeling like you needed to make 100 posts, you can be comforted that you, you don't need to make 100, 10 is probably sufficient. And if you were feeling like one was gonna get the job done, maybe shoot for a number closer to 10. So that's sort of our, our, our guide marker for folks. Great, all right, those are the questions I've seen so far. So I'm gonna keep moving along, but thank you everyone for, for posting when you do have questions. It's great to, to keep the conversation going. All right, so I mentioned uh, platform options. So, of course, there are lots and lots out there in our email series. We dig into this a little bit more, um, but just as sort of a, a, a starting point, Facebook is totally free uh, to use for organizations. There are no donation costs uh, on Giving Tuesday, and I think Last time I checked, they, they were holding donation costs um, for all of 2020 because of the pandemic, uh, but it's been a few weeks since I checked that, so you might want to double check. But at least on Giving Tuesday, there are no donation costs. However, for most organizations, you don't get a lot of data back on who your donors are beyond their name. Um, so if you're looking to acquire new donors and have a strong engagement with them, Facebook is maybe not the strongest option, but it is low to zero cost. GoFundMe charity, specifically their charity page, um, you are able to collect a little bit more information. It's also really strong for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, but has a little bit of cost involved. And then as Many, if not all of you know, we worked with GiveGab for many years. Um, their platform didn't end up being a great fit for us this year, mostly just because there are so many, but we still consider them friends and we consider them a best in class platform. So if you were a huge fan and you still want to use them, there is a higher cost involved, but you get a lot of data. So that just kind of gives you, again, a small snapshot of different types of platform options that might be available to your organization. All right, and I see a question in the Q&A box. What time do you suggest sending your first Giving Tuesday email? This is a great question. Um, I have seen a wide variety. I know there are a lot of folks that like to send it at 12.01 a.m. Um, so that whenever their, their audience wakes up, that's the first thing that they see. Um, I think that's kind of fun. I think it really emphasizes that sense of urgency for Giving Tuesday is a 24 hour giving period. We're all in it together and we're excited about this one specific day. The other time that's probably the most common, um, we know that donors are really active during specific times of day um, around breakfast time when folks are, you know, drinking their coffee and scrolling through their phone, around lunchtime when you're kind of taking a mental break from whatever it is that's filling your day these days, uh, right around what we used to call a happy hour, I mean, it's still happy hour, it could happen if you get to leave your house, um, but maybe it's the, the five to seven o'clock window, that's the, the specifically the time that we're talking about. And then interesting, like right around uh, nine to 10 o'clock. So again, folks are kind of winding down, probably scrolling through their phone. That's the, the last sort of big push of giving during the day. So those are the times we see the most activity for Giving Tuesday. All right, great. Thank you for these excellent questions. All right, so now I'm going to dig into, like I said, this is information I literally just got yesterday. So I'm excited to share it with you. 
from our friends at Giving Tuesday. So folks, this is another one that's sort of continuing uh, message that we, we've heard before, but it's great to hear that it is still applicable. Applicable. 52% said they want to donate on this day because it allows them to be part of a bigger group of people doing good. And I'm gonna come back to this idea a couple of times in the next series of slides. I think now more than ever, Giving Tuesday and specifically being a part of something and having an opportunity to do something generous, to do something good, to care about our community is something that is really resonating with more people than ever before. We are in honestly kind of a, a scary, weird time. And for some folks, it's been very difficult. For some folks, it maybe doesn't feel as different than what is normal for them. But but everyone has a little bit of difference uh, and, and there's a global pandemic. So it's hard to know how we as individuals fit into such a giant picture. Um, but Giving Tuesday is a concrete way that folks can say, I'm doing something good for my community. And people really, really seem to be connecting to that. Like I said, this year, as much as ever, if not more. And this one I really like as well, this giving is not the end goal. I mean, the dollars are the action that we're taking, um, but it's part of taking an action to make the community we want to live in. Um, we all have ideas about you know, who we want to engage with and how we want folks to engage with us. And this is a way to demonstrate it, that being generous, being kind, um, taking care of one another is something that we value and Giving Tuesday is a really great avenue for that. See a question in the chat. Question is, why wouldn't you just use PayPal as a platform? How long does it take to get a payout from Facebook? Yeah, so PayPal absolutely is another option. It just didn't happen to be one of the three that I, I chose as our sort of snapshot, but there's no reason not to use it. Um, it is probably a little bit lower on the on the data scale of things, um, but like I said, you know your organization best, so whatever works for you works. Um, the Facebook payout question, I cannot say I have a, a concrete answer to. I have heard from nonprofits um, a wide variety of answers. Some folks have said they've gotten their payment very quickly, and some folks have said it takes as long as four to six months. So that I would say is another complication of using Facebook as your primary uh, donation platform is I, I don't think there is a guarantee on when you get those funds. All right, thank you again for the questions. So moving right along, and I apologize, this slide is a little bit grainy. Um, I was grabbing screenshots from the presentation yesterday. Some of these uh, have, not, have not even been fully released yet. So uh, if you are having trouble seeing it, I will try to, to walk folks through. So Giving Tuesday, the national team has partnered with a number of national organizations, including a over 20 uh, different digital giving platforms, including folks like PayPal and Facebook, um, GiveGab are all participants. Those folks together have worked on data to better understand giving specifically on Giving Tuesday, but also just nonprofit sector giving trends in general. So this was one of the things that was shared yesterday that I thought was super interesting specifically for, again, you can see that this data is from January through June of 2020. So it's really, really fresh. Um, when you look at donations, there is an increase. Um, something that kept saying yesterday that really stuck with me was generous people are generous. So the same person that gave to disaster relief is also giving to their neighborhood nonprofit. They're also probably the person that makes a casserole for somebody that is sick and needs a pick-me-up. Generous people are generous. Um, 
So we're seeing an increase of donations across the board, but the one that really sticks out is this 19.2% increase in what they call general donors. So that's donors under $250. On Giving Tuesday uh, across Illinois, we know that the average donation was about $120, $125. And that was pretty consistent over the last four years. So that very much fits into this general donor category. Um, so this year we know that while there are lots and lots of households and individuals that are struggling with their financial stability, for folks that are, uh, are stable, they are making more donations than ever and they tend to be in smaller amounts. They're average people that are saying, I'm going to do something good for my community. So there's actually a huge opportunity to connect to those folks that are wanting to do good. So some of the big takeaways, I just said this one, generous people are generous. Um, again, that one will be probably repeated several times, uh, not only because it's really important, but also it just makes me feel really good to, to just think of that simple fact. Um, also, people want to connect in multiple ways. So there was another really interesting data point. I wasn't able to, I don't think I have the, the chart for it, but they look specifically at the May campaign of folks that gave just dollars, folks that did just an action, like giving blood or donating time or donating things, and then folks that did both. And the folks, the category of folks that did both, giving dollars and giving things or time, that was the largest category. So again, it connects back to that generous people are generous. If folks are in willing to engage in one way, they're probably willing to engage in another. So a really strong push this year is asking folks in the community not only to make dollar donations, but if you have a socially distant, safe way of volunteering, volunteering is a great option. If you have tangible needs, there are things that your organization needs, that's a really strong option. Um, but pairing together other ways that folks can connect in on Giving Tuesday. And as we just talked about, the small donors matter. Um, this year is probably going to be bigger than ever for those small donation amounts. And this was another really interesting one. Um, so we've got issue voters over here. And this was a question that, that I raised yesterday for the data that was shared uh, at the, the national team is, did that include election donations? Because I was thinking about, you know, it's, it's a big election year. Lots of people are making small donation to election campaigns. Is that skewing the data? And they said there was some of that included just because there were so many different sources. Um, but primarily, the data that they're looking at is specifically to nonprofit community serving organizations. Um, so folks are super active this year, both in terms of giving and also civically active for the election. Um, but that's not, it doesn't seem to be decreasing either one. One doesn't seem to be impacting the other. And 82% of folks that are, 82% of young folks, 18 to 34 years old, who are aware of Giving Tuesday participate. So I think that really goes back to, you know, this is a specifically a digital campaign in, in many facets, again, this year more than ever. Um, and so if you can reach out to more folks, if you can connect to more folks through social media, they're more likely to be that first time donation from a younger donor. And I see in a Q and an A, what are other, way, other days that people look to, to show support? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna ask for a clarification just in case, because uh, those are two different answers. If it's other days or other ways, um, if you can, Type in another question to, to clarify that one. I will come back to it. All right, thank you. All right, and then some of you may, I, I may have used this in webinars in the past, um, but I felt it was is worth repeating. So in these two pictures on the left-hand side of your screen, you've got uh, Michael Bloomberg, recently, and Michael Bloomberg when he was 22 years old, the day he graduated from Johns Hopkins University. And on the year that he graduated, he made a $5 
donation to the university. If you translate that into $20, $20, it's about $27. $27. And so the question that they, they asked us to think about yesterday was, how are you treating your $27 donations? Are you treating them as potential future Michael Bloomberg's? Um, he has since then given $2.6 billion to Johns Hopkins University. So of course we know that not every $27 donation is going to turn into 2.6 billion, um, but speaking just out of you know, my sort of personal anecdotes, when I first got started working with Giving Tuesday, um, my very first year I gave several donations, small amounts to totally random organizations I had never heard of, just to kind of see what the process looked like, how it, how the experience went from the donor's side. And I was really surprised that several of them, I only got the tax receipt. I didn't get any follow-up email telling me how those dollars were spent or what it contributed to, or even another ask saying, hey, you donated to us once, we're doing this really cool thing, would you donate again? And so don't lose that opportunity. I think if folks are, are interested enough to make the donation the first time, they're looking for ways to make a difference, to make an impact in your organization might be the one that matches with what, what their passions are. So, so don't lose that opportunity. You never know where it could go. All right, I see a question in the chat. So I'm gonna open that up real quick. Oh yes, thank you for the clarification. Okay, um, the quote on the top of the last page said that Giving Tuesday is one of three days that people choose to donate. Just curious what the other days are. Yes, so I know that um, the other main day is the last day of the year. Folks are looking to make donations to nonprofits um, when they're thinking about their taxes and the end of their their financial year. I actually don't know the third one. Um, so the, those two ones I know off the top of my head, the third one I don't know. But the point that the Giving Tuesday team was trying to make is that Giving Tuesday, the last day of the year, are unique opportunities when donors are looking for nonprofits, unlike the other 362 days of the year when nonprofits are searching for donors. Um, so to really take advantage of that opportunity when there are people actively saying, I want to make a donation, who am I going to make it to? I hope that helps. All right, so focusing in a little bit more on what we are learning about donations and the sector itself. So looking at past year's data, um, they shared with us that the nonprofit sector tends to be, as a whole, fairly resilient. It tends to drop a little bit less than the economy in total, and it tends to bounce back a little bit quicker. Again, that's across the whole sector. It doesn't necessarily mean for individual organizations. Um, that being said, because, of course, individuals are Im impacted by the pandemic, by the economic crisis, Individual giving may be suppressed in some areas, but we haven't actually seen that this year. Um, so thinking about different ways to connect with maybe audiences you haven't connected with before. Diversity in any way you can think of it, um, be it race, age, gender, identity, all of those different aspects of diversity, ability, um, all of those are, are things that we want to be thinking about. Who is our typical audience and how do we reach beyond that? And then, of course, collaboration over competition. So we're going to dig a little bit more into some of these. This is another one that I grabbed as a screenshot. So again, my apologies. It's not quite as clear as I would like it to be. But this was something they shared with us that I also found really interesting, looking specifically at the conversation, the social media chatter around Giving Tuesday now. So the weeks leading up to our traditional Giving Tuesday campaigns, the biggest word that we see over and over and over again, unsurprisingly, is donation, donate. 
Leading up to Giving Tuesday now, when you looked at the conversations, both coming from the nonprofits and from the public talking about the day, the words that came up the most were community and support. You see, donation is still up there, of course, but community and support came up almost as frequently or as frequently as donation itself. So again, really hammering home that feeling of people are wanting to make a contribution, they're wanting to show their support, they're wanting to be engaged. So again, we're in an unprecedented moment and there are things that are, that are changing the way that we're engaging, so many things that are changing the way we're engaging right now. The rapid response right after the pandemic started, the Giving Tuesday Now campaign um, really launched a lot of folks to engage in donations, in charitable giving, in charitable actions, um, any type of generosity. A lot of folks were engaging in ways that they hadn't before. So here's another one comparing, and this one just absolutely blew me away. Looking specifically at online donations, the donation amount for Giving Tuesday 2019 online donations was $511 million. The Giving Tuesday Now campaign in May, the online donations were $503 million. So that was just a matter of months after the Giving Tuesday 2019 campaign, but you still saw almost the exact same amount of online donations. So folks were really hungry for a way to make a positive impact. Let's see a couple more questions. This is a really interesting one. How long would you recommend collection, collecting donations for the Giving Tuesday campaign? One day, one week? That is a hard question, and I think it's harder this year ever, more than ever. Um, I think I'm gonna have to say I don't know. This is a really unusual year. We don't have a lot to base it on, and I would say if, if I were making the decision for, for an organization, I would look to your constituents and to what else is happening in your sort of giving calendar. Um, I know a lot of folks use Giving Tuesday as kind of a kickoff to their end of year campaign. Um, so you could do a longer period that way. Um, the one thing I would say actually is not to do explicitly, like exclusively a 24 hour window. Um, last year, I think some folks might remember if you were if you were registered and participated, we had the window open, I think it was 10 or 12 days total, um, close to two weeks. We had previously really stuck to our guns of giving Tuesday is a day. It's a it's a sense of urgency for a day. Uh, and then had found out uh, before before our 2019 campaign that actually we were one of only three campaigns, three large campaigns in the country that did really an exclusively 24 hour day. And that about uh, 10 to 15% of total donations come not on Giving Tuesday. Um, so I would say the only thing I would suggest not doing is an exclusive 24 hour period because schedules are crazy and folks have the best intentions to do something on a specific day, but maybe they forgot and they want to make a donation a couple days later or they're, you know, super organized individuals and they say, I want to get it done. I don't want to forget it. I want to do it early. Um, so I would suggest it being more than one day, but how long and where you close that off, I would take a look at the rest of your, your end of year calendar of giving. I hope that's helpful. All right, moving right along. So there, again, there are a lot of defining moments going on right now. The Black Lives Matter movement, the election, the pandemic, there's so many conversations that are critically important to how we define ourselves and our community. And folks are looking for how they can get involved and do something. The other thing we've learned, so moving a little bit away from specific donors and more to information we've learned about successful campaigns, 
relevance, authenticity, authenticity, urgency, and a bonus for creativity. Those are the things, you know, they're things we've seen before, and they're things that we saw particularly in the May campaign as being critically important. And I wanted to dig a little bit more into some of them. So this is kind of uh, two different ways to create a sense of urgency. One, people without X will suffer without your support. Two, you can end someone's suffering today. So I think, you know, the example that's frequently used is PCUSA. I see those commercials and they're poor little puppies that are sad and wet and in the cold. And I most of the time grab my checkbook because it kills me. Um, I think a lot of folks feel that, but it, even after I've made the donation, I still feel sad and I feel like, what else can I do? I'm not doing enough. Everything's terrible. And I don't get left with a really good feeling. When we think about you can end someone's suffering today, phrasing our urgency as your gift makes a real impact and makes a change. Folks that see those donation messages, those calls to action, tend to be more inspired to give again later, either in dollars or in time or in gifts. Um, so think about how you phrase your urgency. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary to talk about the consequences of not having the support that we need. Um, but when you have a chance to go for uplifting, we know that it has a really positive uh, impact on the donors. So keep that one in mind. And relevance, again, and these sort of tie together. Um, this was a campaign, again, that, that ran in the spring um, from the Latino Community Foundation, the Love Not Fear Fund. Um, so this was, I believe, a, a joint foundation project. So there were a lot of different organizations involved and the funds were distributed to a number of different organizations. But it, it encapsulated it. So instead of trying to describe everyone's different project and all the different work that they did, they just boiled it down to this really simple, incredibly powerful message, love, not fear. Um, and of course, have this beautiful image. And for folks that have been coming to these presentations for a long time, this is that teal color we talked about a couple of years ago that has, for whatever reason, is more likely for donors to click on it. Um, so that's, that's your other quirky tip for today. If you can include this sort of tealish blue color, it has a very positive impact on donors for a reason I don't know, but it happens to be one of my favorite colors. So that's why it works for me. Um, but more importantly than that, the message of having a clear call to action and a clear positive image and something that connects to these moments that we're in right now. I mean to go past that one. So kind of summing up these last several slides, the antidote to fear and uncertainty is action. Um, when we're in a time as individuals and as a society where we're not sure what's happening next, being able to give the opportunity to folks to take a clear step of action to do something positive is a really strong and empowering moment for the community and the donors themselves as well. And this one came with uh, first incredible adorableness of this child. Uh, but to talk a little bit, going back to the donors, giving during a crisis, thinking about sort of the, the profile of the folks that were the most active, specifically after the May campaign, folks that had some sort of philanthropic sentiment. So maybe they had donated before, maybe they hadn't, um, but they had expressed in some way that they, they wanted to do make a contribution. Folks, we talked about this, that are financially secure. Um, so the pool of donors might be slightly smaller than usual, but those that are able are very enthusiastic right now. And this one was interesting. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to imagine that there are folks that are not concerned about COVID. Uh, we've got some I've got personally some folks in my household that are immunocompromised. So we think about it a lot. Uh, but 
in a survey that was done in May to folks that had donated, if they expressed that they were concerned about COVID, they were far more likely to have made a donation. So those are some points sort of getting to know some of the whys behind our donors activity. So summing up lessons for 2020, resist the myth of donor fatigue. Um, this is something that the folks at Giving Tuesday repeat over and over again, and there's always a ton of pushback, and I understand why. Um, because this idea of donor fatigue has been around for quite a while, that you know, if we have a, a major natural disaster, there's a huge hurricane, then nonprofits aren't gonna get the donations. Well, in years of data, that has not been shown to be the case. Um, people will rise to the occasion and meet both needs. Again, going back to diversify who, what, and how you ask. Embrace small dollar donors. Those are going to be really active this year. And this was another one that, that kept coming up in the session yesterday was don't retreat. Um, I think there's a, a feeling that maybe you or your organization are struggling and others are struggling, so we shouldn't ask for anything. But this is actually exactly the time to ask because folks are, are really enthusiastic about connecting and supporting and building their community to be a strong community right now. All right. And so I know that for folks that have used campaign messages and images before. Um, we've had downloadables. We're kind of switching gears here to the resources section. So we've had images that were available to download and this year we wanted to send you straight to the Giving Tuesday campaign. They've got some great images like this um, that address the time that we are currently in. So you can find those at givingtuesday.org slash logos. Um, they have sort of flyer type images like this one that have messaging already on them. They have them sized for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I believe. And then you can of course repurpose them for whatever fits your organization and your campaign. So givingtuesday.org slash logos. And I also wanted to follow up with the day after Giving Tuesday. This is a big campaign. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of work to get through. So once you ensure that all those incredibly important thank you messages are sent, measure your success, celebrate with your team. Um, no matter what the results are from your day, you've worked incredibly hard and it's important to celebrate those wins. Uh, then I hope you can be like these super cuddly looking puppies and take a long nap and reward yourself for your job well done. And that is the end of my official data sharing portion. Uh, like I said, I'm going to grab some of the links that I mentioned and pop those into the chat. But I would strongly encourage folks, if you have questions, you want to keep the conversation going. This is sort of open time for, for any Giving Tuesday related questions. We'll keep the chat open. I'm actually going to... Stop sharing. Feel free. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, feel free to type questions either into the Q&A box or into the chat. Um, if you'd like to be on audio, you can raise your hand. Um, I'm looking for the button to unmute everyone, but I'm struggling to find it at the moment. My apologies. So here is the link for, I mentioned the recorded webinars also from that page. If you're interested in the email series, it's a six part series of Giving Tuesday specific tips. 
Um, you can also sign up at that link that I just posted in the chat. And then the other one I will grab real quick. For folks that are really big on data, um, and again, since that was so very new, I wanted to share the Giving Tuesday lab. Um, so the link is in the chat as well. The lab page on Giving Tuesday has um, most of the data I just shared in blog posts and in research reports there. Um, some of it is very user friendly. Some of it's not as user friendly, but there's a lot of information. So if you really want to dig into those resources, please feel free to go straight to the source. And then I did see a question come in. I wonder if anyone has any lessons learned or things that have worked especially well in their campaign to share. That is a great question. I will also highlight um, we did a statewide recording of an all-star panel that you can find at that link that I shared for the digital giving webinar series. So if folks are looking for those, uh, that recording, you're welcome to do that, but please do feel free to share uh, anything in your campaign that you want to brag about and share with the community. Feel free to throw that in the chat. I see a couple in the Q&A. Uh, yes, so someone asked specifically about the pricing difference between GiveGab and other platforms. Unfortunately, I don't have that at my fingertips at the moment, but I will put um, my email address and I can connect you to some folks that can give a better answer for that. Oh, a couple more questions. Great. All right, so someone shared that it's their first time working for a nonprofit and conducting Giving Tuesday. Um, does anyone have any tips to share? So please feel free again to share tips in the Q&A. I would strongly encourage you if it is your first time running Giving Tuesday to watch those recorded programs um, from Forefront and sign up for the email series. That'll really get you started in the right direction. Okay, and then there was a question about the link. Um, Julie, do you see Julie? Forgive me if I incorrectly pronounce your name, Zajic. Do you see the link in the chat now? I might not have posted it as quickly before you sent the question in. Let's see if I can send it directly to you. All right, and then with that, I think I will turn it back over to Lindsay and Julie. Any closing comments for today? Um, sorry, can you all hear me okay? Yep. This is Hi, everyone. Um, I, um, I guess my only closing comment would be thank you all for coming or for being here for coming. I wish, I wish we were all in person. Um, <clears throat> but thanks everyone for, for being here and um, again, just to echo what Vicki and Julie talked about earlier um, with the, or what Vicki talked about earlier, excuse me, with the Aurora Women's Empowerment Foundation um, event that's coming up on Monday. If anyone's interested in um, a ticket to that, we have 15, um, no more than two per organization, but send an email to info at dunhamfund.org um, with the, um, in the, in the subject, try to put Two two tickets, TU TU tickets, um, and your name and organization. So that's I think the last thing I would say. And just thank you again to our forefront partners um, who just make this so easy. Yes, and I would just like to say thank you as well for participating in this and for all the work that you're doing to promote your own organization and the services that you provide. I know that it's a challenge right now to pull all this together, um, that everybody is so busy with so much going on around you. And, you know, we're just so appreciative of all the effort that everybody's putting into this. And we wish you the best in your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, I am going to put in the panel again, you know, that are, are not in the panel, but in the chat that um, you 
can begin putting information into our portal on November 10th. And if you do um, the first five steps by November 16th, then your organization will get a copy of Gloria Kelly's new book on leadership, No Surprises. Um, and I, um, I hope that you'll all enter you know it's basically putting in the information that you're already putting out into the community so um, feel free to call me or email me and i'll put my email in the box if you have any questions or you have any trouble with the portal and i'm sure that lindsay and vicky will be available as well yes absolutely okay thank you All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. I hope that today's information was helpful and useful to you. And also, uh, I hope that you feel a little bit more connected to the community. I know personally, I felt sometimes a little bit alone these days. And so it's really nice, you know, even just to see all these names and all this chat and know that we're in it together and uh, we're going to get through this year and be stronger than ever. So Thank you for taking the time, investing your time to be with us today. I hope you have a wonderful day and see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone.